Good morning. Um, so for those who don't know me, my name is Jeff T. I'm uh, the youth and kid pastor here at Westview. And uh, fun, fa fun fact about me, uh, something that you, you, should, you, mo you, you will learn this morning, it's um, in summer 2017, uh, just before I became a youth pastor, I spent the entire summer working for Plan, uh, Plan International. And for those who don't know Plan International, Plan International is a non-profit organization that raises money through sports partnership. And basically, my job was to convince people on the street that they could make a difference in their life, or not just a child, but the entire village. So normally, when people pay for a child, the, the money were for a village, and they were building different things for the, the whole village. So that money represented for one child, but it was for, for a, whole, a whole village. Um, so I don't need to tell you that it was difficult for me to engage and persuade a pass by, a passerby in a just few minutes, especially since they were often in a hurry or in interest, right? So it was, hey, 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 can, can, do you have a minute? Can I talk to you? There's something really important I want to talk to you about. In short, People often struggle with the idea of helping someone from a distance. And that was one of the struggles I had. People say, you know, we don't see those people physically. We, we, we cannot meet those people. So it's kind of like I feel there's a distance between that, you know, that cause and I. So um, you know to have physical proximity to those in need, but at the same time, Often we think of people in, when we, we think about people in need, people need food, water. We, most of the time we can think about people out of our city, province, and, and maybe country. But every often these people are not fra, far from us and we can reach out to them. And this is somehow, somewhat, somewhat how I pursue the mission also. Sometimes when we think about mission, we think about some Christians, some missionary who go away to some another countries to spread the gospel, talk about Jesus. And, and for those who don't know, okay, Jesus commanded his disciples to go into all the world to proclaim the, to proclaim the gospel and baptize new believers in the name of the, the Trinity. Jesus gave us a mission to teach and to be disciples so that the others might also become believers. And this is in Matthew 28, the verse 19, 20. I'm paraphrasing what Jesus said. So, so I, I can understand, I can understand that when we think of missions, we think of Christians going elsewhere in the world. However, the people around us also need the gospel. And we can often forget that the mission here and now is possible and important. The mission here and now means spread the gospel around you, with your neighbors, at work, at school. You can be mission here and now. So, um... You know, we, we are currently in Acts, Acts for like a couple of months, and this morning we dig in in Acts 8, the verse 26 to, to 40, and it is a story of Philip. Uh, there's mention of three Philips in the Bible, um, but that Philip, who, who with the, the help of the Holy Spirit, experienced the mission here, here. And this is a scripture that I'm going to read that we'll focus this morning. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert, road that runs, run, runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia. <laughs> okay, I'm stopping there. Last time, I don't know if you were there, but there's a time I preached and I was not able to make the difference uh, of two words, okay? Unique and unique. Okay, 
So I don't know if I, I say it well, but this morning it will be a practice, okay? That's, uh, it's really funny, okay? So it's told out, and he made the treasurer of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under the Kendik, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seeing his courage, he was reading aloud from the book of prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the courage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I, unless someone instruct me? And he usually to come up into the carriage and sit with him. And we're stopping there. There's something else after um, that part. So, so basically, just to give you a little bit of context, Philip was uh, um, an apostle. He, he was sent by God to Samaria and to preach the gospel. And although there, there is no uh, an explicit mention of the construction of a physical church by Philip, his action led the formation of a significant Christian community in that region. And, and during his stay in, in Samaria, Philip preached to the inhabitants, performed miracles, and covered many people. The crowds listened attentively to Philip, and many were healed in various disease and delivered from evil spirit. So, Philip had a fine feel of work in Samaria. Everything went well. Like, he had a good ministry. He built a great community. Everybody was, was fine. There were new believers, and believers who was already believers continued to grow spiritually. But the, the angel of the Lord, without further explanation, sent him far away along a desert path. Oh, dessert and dessert. That was also a, a mistake. For, yeah, dessert. So Philip obeyed and soon found a job to be done to proclaim the gospel, not to a crowd, but to a single man. Philip followed God's will. He followed God's spirit. He followed, he followed God's move. And, and, and he seized the opportunity to preach Jesus. In that story, Philip had nothing to do. All the initiative came to God. He just said, you know, Philip, I'm calling you now. Just get up and follow me. And Philip didn't ask, what, for why? What, why do you ask me to, to get up? Why do you ask me to go there? Philip just get up. He stand and, and he went where the spirit like, were guiding him. And, and, you know, Philip had been an instrument in Samaria in the way where, where he was, in a way, in his glory, in his comfort zone. Everything went well. There were no reason to left that place. He was in a good spot. But Jesus took him out of his comfort zone and guided him to go into the desert. He didn't know why or what his calling was there. So he left his work calling where he was. There was no reason to leave, and as everything went well. But the obedience of Philip was a game changer. His obedience came from his, his sensitivity to God's voice. Sometimes we, we can, like, as a, sometimes as a child of God, as a Christian, sometimes we can... We can have the impression that we, we're not able to recognize God's voice. But here, like, definitely Philip was sensitive. He was just looking for that. Whatever it is, whatever what God asking me, I just want to hear you. I just want to be in your presence. I just want to follow you and follow your will. So he, he understood that the caller, the caller is more important than the calling. The color is more important than the calling. And, and, you know, a few weeks ago I was talking with a friend, and we were talking about jobs, okay? And we, man, we mentioned how some, sometimes we, we look for the job that will help us the most comfortable in, in terms of salary, 
working condition, environment. You know, we, we try to have like a good spot, right? And, and as our discussion were, was pr progressing, we start to talk about church. We're, we start to talk about like serving God, ministry. We talk about also uh, the calling of God that has entrust, entrusted to us. And, and we, we, we mentioned that sometimes also in our ministry or calling, we can feel a little bit comfortable, right? We, we didn't plan at all to, to leave the community we are. We're not planning to, to make some change. We just, we good. We good. And we might feel maybe some, like feeling when we were in Samaria. Everything is good. Well, there's no reason to leave our community, make change. But, you know, at the end of the day, what is matter is God's will and guidance. It's not, it's not about how much I gain, how much I'm comfortable, but how much God provides because when he called, he prepared the field. And this week, I don't know why I was meditating on that verse. I, I know why. This week, I was looking to just learn in a way and leave the promise of God and put it in my heart. So I, I start to read Matthew, and sorry, I didn't prepare for this for the screen. It was just I'm improvising now. But there was this, this scripture in in Matthew 11, the verse 28 to 30. I know only in French, so I'm, I'm going to par paraphrasing this. The scripture said that, "Come to me, you, those who are tired and and I don't know what is bur or got burden, something like this." And I'm going to give you peace. And I think like when we, when we think about, you know, following the caller more than the calling is to make our, 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 our trust in the Lord that it will give us peace and provide peace in those moments. It's going to prepare the field for us. And I know that sometimes the calling can be scary the calling, can, the, the calling can, can be scary, you know, and, and what, I, what I mean by that, you know, the Holy Spirit, like, is big to Philip and say, you follow me, I'm going to send you somewhere in the desert. And there, like, when we think about desert, it's like emptiness, it's hot. It's not, it's not a place where you've, you're supposed to be comfortable. It's pretty hot during the day, and I heard, like, during the night, it's pretty cold. But, but I know that calling could be scary sometimes. And sometimes it can, scary, it can be scary because of the, the, the kind of the feel, the people, the context of the, the, the person or the people that there, and the fact that we don't know and didn't have the time to prepare. And, you know, the same, the same friend that I just I mentioned a few seconds ago, we are talking about, you know, job and blah, blah, blah. But after that, we start to think, to talk about, uh, we talk about Batman. We just, we just talk about Batman. And basically that day, like, God revealed all the message that I'm sharing to you this morning. But we're talking about Batman, just like this. He asked me, do you like Batman? I say yes. And I recall that when I was young, I recall that when I was young, my oldest brother, Love Batman. He's a fan of Batman. He eats Batman every day. Okay, he sees himself in Batman, and I don't understand why. Today I understand a little bit more why. But um, and fun fact with Batman, it's Batman is a superhero without superpower. It's 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 Batman is like you and I. He got a flu and tomorrow he can die. But he's a superhero. And I, I, I went to a Facebook group of my brother, and that Facebook group is a comics, manga, everything related to superhero. And they always made like a versus. Let's say like Batman versus Iron Man, Batman versus that villain. And, and there's something, the fun fact about Batman that I learned, it's if Batman had the chance to prepare himself, it can be... Almost everybody, okay? And I think it's a little bit exaggerated, but in that group, that was the thing. If Batman had the chance to know who you are, you know your weaknesses, he's going to prepare himself, and he's going to beat you. That's for sure. 
And Batman make me think about sometime as us, as a Christian, when God sending us on the field to preach his word. We like to be prepared. We like to know the, the detail of, of, of all the scripture. We like to, to be able to, to respond all the questions as possible. If someone has a question, you got the answer right away. But sometimes when we have this mentality, we, we cannot stop the Holy Spirit do what he does the best, convince the heart. We don't need to have superpower. We can let God do his job. However, <laughs> however, um, although we cannot anticipate all the questions, it is important to spend time in the Word of God. The Holy Spirit reminds us of what we have learned, of what we have experienced. But it cannot remind us what we do not know. So there's a knowledge of the Scripture. It, it is crucial to be ready to answer questions about faith, about our faith. And this is what 1 Peter 3 verse 15 said. Instead, you, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, of a believer, always be ready to explain it. That verse at first can, can feel like contradict, contra, is a, like, can feel like as a contra, contradiction of what I said, but no. This verse, Peter encouraged believers facing persecution and difficulties to be ready to explain their faith and the hope they have in Christ. Even in time of suffering, Peter emphasizes the importance of doing this with gentleness and respect rather than in an aggressive and defensive manner. The, the scripture does not mean that we must always have an answer to all question, all possible question, but rather that we must be ready to share the reason for our hope in Jesus Christ. It is an invitation to be authentic, witnesses, and ready to talk about our faith when the opportunity arises, but always with gentles, gentleness and respect. So there, there's like somehow a responsibility where we have to spend time with our Lord. And you know, I said, I said early that I start to meditate on the promise of God, not only to learn the verse, but always to live it when, when I need to live it. On Monday, on Tuesday, I need to remind those promises of God. I need it really, really to, 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 it need to be more than a theory thing but in the practical in your life. So the Holy Spirit help us to think that we should, what we should say, that we already know. So we have to spend time with the Lord. We don't need to get education. We don't need to be like perfect to have all the, the answer, but know why we believe and how we walk with him. And, and that made me think about another, per, another character in the Bible. I don't know if you know that guy. You, you, you might know that guy. It's called Paul. And Paul was a, a guy who, who liked to share the gospel to, to the nations, right? And um, there's, there's a scripture. It's still in Acts Act 17, the verse 16 to 23, or 34. But we, I'm going to read some, some part of it. Um, Paul arrived, he, he was like chilling in the place, he was just there, and he started a conversation with people and started to like, to speak about his faith, to speak about who is Jesus. Let's read, let's read that scripture. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply troubled by all the idols he saw everywhere in, everywhere in the city. He went to the synagogue to reason with the Jewish and the God-fearing Gentiles. And he spoke daily in the public square to all who happened to be there. He also had a debate with some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. When he told them about Jesus and his resurrection, they said, what is this bab babbler trying to say with these strange ideas he picked up? 
others said. It seemed to preaching, it seems to preaching about some foreign gods. Then they took him to the high council of the city. Come and tell us about this new teaching, they said. You are seeing some rather strange things, and we want to know what it's all about. It should be explained that all the Athenians, as well as the foreigners, foreigners in Athens, seems to spend all the time discussion, discussing the last, last ideas. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as a follower, follows. Men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw, you, so I saw your many shrines. And one of your altars had the inscription on it, to an unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. And, and, and we, we stop there, but, but Paul continued to just like establish like a kind of connection with the, with the crowd and start to like, you know, you and I, we believe that there's, there's something over us. And it's, it continued with just describe how God it is. Who is God for him? Until like Paul started to talk about resurrection. So there were like a gradation of how Paul was, was speaking to, about God and who is God, who is Jesus. And people, people were, people stopped him when he started to talk about resurrection. And this is what the scripture said. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection of the dead, some laughed in content, but others said, we want to hear more about this later. That had Paul's discussion with them, but some joined him and became believers. And I want to put an emphasis, I want to put like emphasis, yeah, I want to put an emphasis on the fact that we, spreading the gospel, there's a victory on spreading the gospel around us. There's a victory spreading the gospel around us. We can see that scripture and feel like at first, oh man, a lot of people that have me have him, of Paul, it didn't have seem look good to peep to the eyes of people. But at the end of the day, he made the gospel known. He made Jesus' name known. He made the resurrection known. He made sure that people know that there's a God that came on the, came unhurt for the humanity because he loved us. He gave his life for us. He went to, to the cross. Now, he was now on the cross. He died and, and resurrected after three days for us because he loved us. And sometimes I think that we, we shut down, we, we can shut down sometimes opportunity that God give us, give us, or we're not really paying attention. We don't believe that we have a calling of power for a change in people's in people's life. Sometimes we underestimate the interest of people in knowing God. Everything is already prepared by God, as, as with Philip. He didn't have much to do than spend time with God and know who he is for him. And I think that we need to, to bring this hope and joy to people. Because there's, there's joy and hope. There's joy and hope. And that's what Paul said, Paul did. And that's what Philip did when he, he went to that carriage and spent time with the eunuch. This is the end of the story with like a jump in that story of Philip with the eunuch. This is the end of that story. As they rode along, they came to some water. So basically, the, the eunuch was reading a scripture in Isaiah. And that scripture in Isaiah was explaining how Jesus suffered. And they didn't understand, was it Isaiah that was suffer? I, I, I don't get it. So Philip started to preach the gospel. He preached who, that was Jesus, that Jesus suffered for our sins and take our sin on the cross. 
And the scripture said that as they, they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out, they came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north in the town of Azadus and blah, blah, blah. But something that's really interesting about that part, it's, it, it's, it's not about Philip. That story is not really about Philip. It's about the message that was bring to someone. It's not about us. It's not about Philip Ego. Because what the eunuch gained was unique and more valuable. So when Philip disappeared, the joy was still in the Ethiopian because it was not about the person and his ability to speak the gospel, but all about Jesus changing his life. And this is me this morning. This is how I feel. The, 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 the fact that I don't have the, 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 all the abilities and, and capacity of my home to bring the gospel. And I spent so many time to pray yesterday night. I was, okay, God, I, I'm just going to preach. And after he's done, you know, only 30 minutes and he's done. And the Holy Spirit tell me, you know, Jeff, don't go away. Enjoy this moment. Don't go away. I, just, I, could, I could just like come here, you know, and try to read well. And I, I, I did read what I had. But I'm engaging you also because I feel really empowered by the Spirit. But yesterday I feel, you know, I could just come and share something really great. I read everything. Everything is, everything is like seems good. But the Holy Spirit told me yesterday night, don't go away. Don't escape. Stay and enjoy the moment. It's not about you, Jeff. It's about the gospel. It's about the gospel. I felt like yesterday, I know I had a message for like a couple of weeks, but I felt like the way to deliver it, and I, I was still looking, God, what do you want to say? And I still tried to figure out, like, speak to me, speak to me. And it was really yesterday night that I was like, it just, it's about the message. Bring it like faithfully with joy and, and, and with all the hope that the supposed to, the gospel the gospel bring just come with your hope with your, with your, your joy and let me do what I, I do the best <sighs> so it's not about ability to speak the gospel but all about Jesus changing his life all about what the unique receive and not the person who was sent and sometimes we think more about our image and what people think will think about us than the joy they could receive from accepting Jesus and being definitely transformed. We don't have to force anything. Sometimes we feel we must force a discussion. Just let the Spirit do does what He does the best. And you just. Spend your time with God. Look, 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 look for him. Look for him. Stop trying always to calculate everything. Just let him, let him move. That's what I'm trying to do this morning. And um, I want to invite you this morning, friends. I want to invite you this morning. You know, there's, I will say there's, a few, I would say like a few months, but I will say a year, I'm looking for someone, and maybe, maybe I find that, that person and I just never like, I never like pay attention to that, but I'm looking for someone to invest. I'm looking to someone through who I can, I, 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 can, sp I can spread the gospel. I'm looking for someone in that season that God want me to spend time to pray and share the gospel, share his love. And I want to invite you also um, 
I want to finish with, with a time of reflection. Um, so we can think about what God calling us in this season for ourselves. What is, what is God asking you to do? Where is the place that God sending you? In which desert? Which place? And the way we're going to do it, I'm going to invite the prayer team to come in the front and also the musician. But this time will be a time where we, we think about, okay, God, what's next? What's next about leaving the mission here and now? What's next? How, what, what do you expect from me? To, how do you, do you expect me to, to be on the field and share your love to people? And I want to I wanna finish with that verse. It's in Romans 10, verse 14 and 15. And you can meditate during this time of reflection. But, now, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they, if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tell them, tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messenger who bring good news. And this is a way where they talk about um, how beautiful the feet of those who bring good news. This is a poetic way of saying that the messengers who bring the gospel are blessed and honored. Because it brings the message of salvation. So a few questions. A few questions. I'm going to invite the prayer team to come up if they can. Just if you, if you feel that you want to stand to prayer, you can. If you feel you want to stay sit, you can stay sit. If you want to pray with someone beside you, you can also. Just do what I tried to, to do this morning. Let the Spirit move. Let the Holy Spirit move in you. And this is a true question we're going to dig in and reflect on. Who's, who is God calling you to evangelize this season? What can you do to get people around you talking about the gospel? Do you have someone in mind for whom you can pray and invest your time to show the, the cross? So let, let's take that time to reflect on our life. God, how do you call me in mission here and now? How do I look like at the job where I'm living with my neighbors at school? Just let the Spirit move. Holy Spirit, move. <laughs>